Hello everybody, welcome again to my channel here at home, passing the virus uh, pandemic, no gigs. So I had time, I said, let me do a video about this uh, thing that Gary Willis uh, taught me once. Uh, so using positions for reading and for improvising. So when we're gonna play, let's uh, take a look at the possibilities. You either have uh, scales, or you can have arpeggios, or you can have a combination of or you can have uh, notes that are required for uh, to be played uh, with jumping technique you know jumping all over the neck like if you have octaves or let's say uh, sevens you know all of that you're gonna use your hand uh, moving but when you have one scale in one um, key and you have to read it's a lot easier to do this technique so Gary told me for major use this finger and this finger uh, for the tonic okay for minor use this finger or this finger so I'm gonna play and I'm gonna show you what that means is uh, that you're gonna have your tonic here so your tonic is always gonna be there or or here so it depends on the line you're gonna see the lowest note, the highest note, and that's gonna dictate which positions are you gonna use. Okay, sometimes you can get away with play a whole line, uh, you know, a whole piece in in one position. You know, but not all the time. Sometimes you have to shift. Okay, here's the secret: when you shift. Sometimes you lose your place. So when I'm shifting from this and I gotta reach to this note, an F, I just move this finger again, sorry about that, to this B flat. So that you always are on your second finger is on the B flat. Right? Or or here. The more you get to here, the more you can jump, uh, I mean, do a stretch and get out of the position. But when you do those stretches and when you do um, the chromatic notes around it, you always have to treat this as the home position. So, um, let's say you have a... Uh, well, E natural would be right there. You just change fingerings. But if you have an F sharp, you, then you have to shift. And then you want to come back to this position so that you're back in, in the same um, area of the neck and you know where everything is, even without looking at the neck because you, that's what happens when you're reading sometimes you cannot be looking at the net, neck and, and reading so you have to know that everything is there and um, when you, when you um, go to the higher note let's say you have to play a part that it goes to the F you, you use this one sorry, that's not that one see, that's, that's the mistake right there and you have the F and you go you go like that now you made a mistake now you don't know where you are because your your tonic finger for the major 
it's not an in B flat. So now you have to either come back to here, but if you stay here and then you go play with this finger, and, and, and then you might get lost if you're not a great reader. I always st struggle a little bit with the reading, you know, that's, it's difficult. It's, it's not a, an art that you can master in, 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 you know, it takes you a couple of years. So, but what I'm trying to do is, um, motivate you to be um, not only a good player by ear but also be a good reader and then you're going to be a great professional also junior irisari told me to practice the trombone books because the trombone books even at the beginning on the basic lessons it takes you to a higher uh, pitch on, on, on the neck, so it forces you to master these positions, you know. So let's say, let me give you an example. Let's say you're, you're in C major, well, you do it here. And yet you have one octave and, and then you shift to that one and, okay, and you, if you are in B flat, you could do this one but you gotta watch it also because you might not want this tone of this tall you know B flat so that's when the shifting uh, comes in play because you know So, in other words, you want to keep your finger, you want to know which is the highest note and which is the lowest note that you have to play for a certain part and use those positions consciously, come back to it like a home position. So, if I'm in, in F and I have, let's say, this, this over here, um, lesson number eight, I, I can see that it goes to F up here and that's it that's the highest note and the lowest note is uh, a C so I have here a position with this tonic F major and I would go like everything in the same position see how easy what was that now if you have let's take the second line and I'm, I'm gonna do it slower because I'm gonna shift so but I'm still in the same position the home position for F with the middle finger on F see so you shift a little bit to use that a flat like a magnet it the, your hand should be always here you know like a magnet when you take it out and then it comes back you take it out you just come back so you either shift on, on this, uh, is it like F sharp? Or A flat? Well, if you have flats in, inside this, then you, don't, you play them in the same position, of course. But it's when you have the, the, the outside notes that you have to shift, or you can shift up. If it's minor, D minor. Or you could do it here. You have more notes in the same position, it's easier to read. If you're playing a piece that, uh, like Don Ali or something. See, I don't want to do... Because that's too muddy there, too, too, too dark, so... I go immediately to this one. 
to that because that I want the open string, you know, the long string. But if you're reading, uh, you can use uh, these these notes because all you need to do. See, when you're reading, it's your a machine. You have to read the notes that are there. If it's a rest, you don't play anything. If it's a, a note, you play the note. You, you most of the time you don't interpret uh, in studio. There's no interpretation. Eh, there might be a little bit, but uh, usually you want to be able to play perfectly the way it's written, even if it sounds to you might sound stupid or whatever. That's why they pay you. So you have to play it um, the way it's it's written. Also, when you're reading, always read the plain letters first. Uh, see, I don't have, well, I have one here, it's my own chart, but it says intro. You know, when you look at the chart, you always look at this first. Montuno, play octaves, okay. You know why? Because if it says tacit first time, and you don't read that, you're gonna start playing, and the composer didn't want you to to start until later. So you just ruined the piece. I mean, if you're in studio, they, they can probably mute you, but live, that would be a big mistake. So then, next you look at the map, you know, you, you look at the, what is it that, that you're gonna play? If it's a DC or the, or the, or the seño, uh, call that, that or the second ending or whatever the map you have to look oh the key the, the key uh, that you're in of course you're gonna look because then that's what's gonna determine the position when you're more advanced um, you're gonna see key changes meter changes tempo changes um, and the dynamics you know if it says piano pianissimo fortissimo those are notes too that's part of the note so don't fall into this mistake of oh well, let me learn the notes first and then I add the dynamics because what happens is sometimes when you learn the notes uh, hard and then if it says pianissimo your your brain already heard that differently so you want to incorporate the, the, the dynamics as soon as possible of course you got to do what you can do first um, if if you cannot do a lot of dynamics, uh, if, if your reading is limited, you might not be able to do the dynamic, but at least try, you know, or, or acknowledge it. Think, okay, this is supposed to be soft, even though I'm, I'm playing everything at the same, and this is supposed to be a little uh, louder. And so, basically, that's the whole lesson for today. A free lesson for you guys. Always, major key, you put your tonic here or here, B flat, C, A, and then try to stay on those positions because it's going to make your life a lot easier. And um, shift to that same fingering, you know, to the same tonic here. Or, or a minor. So you, you always have that finger on the tonic, it's gonna help you a lot. Or this one. F for both major and minor, you can start with this one too. But it would be like this uh, if it's a C, with a little shift. So, or you can do it here. And once you're in this area, then you can stretch and have... It's always easier here because it's more... Uh, it's less uh, space, less uh, real estate that you have to... So I'll see you next time. Uh, please uh, consider subscribing and if you want to donate something that would be good now especially because I don't have any gigs so 
but mm, that's optional okay so thank you for watching see you next time <laughs>